the whole movie is that good. <laughs> uh, it's now my great pleasure to bring out our guests. Let's uh, please give a warm welcome to the star of Our Origins, Michael Pitt. And the writer and director, Mike Cahill. Hi, everybody. How's it going? Just watching that trailer is just, it really supplies the, the feeling of the film. Uh, and I've seen Another Earth, I've seen this film now a few times. Um, they're really rooted in science. And, and I, I, even if I didn't know you, I, I, would, I would say this is a science geek. This is someone who loves science, who makes films that explore scientific ideas and challenge them. How close to filmmaking is, is uh, science? Is there a similarity to, to the work you do and the work of a scientist? Ah, that is a twist on the old question. I thought you were going to say something else. Yeah. Uh, and I had like a prepared answer and everything. And I pretend like, I said that. Yeah, so uh, how, how similar is filmmaking to science? I mean, well, I guess scientists and artists are sort of exploring the same question, which is why are we here? Uh, uh, artists are doing it in one way and using different tools to try and maybe construct a narrative that may make sense, may even be a false narrative, but gives us peace. Uh, and for me, scientists, scientists are my biggest role models in life. Um, I think uh, we can't take for granted that the sum total of human knowledge is growing and it's growing because of the work of scientists every day. Uh, and for me, it's a really, for me and other science fiction writers, I suppose, throughout history, I've also often looked to um, current technology and extrapolating current technology for uh, colors to paint stories. And Michael was saying this the other day that uh, uh, Mary Shelley, who wrote Frankenstein, uh, it was during the time period where... Uh, uh, scientists were just able to animate bodies with electricity, and that had inspired this massive, epic uh, sci-fi horror. Um, so, I mean, we're not exactly doing anything nearly similar, because uh, they're, finding, they're finding truths about nature. We're hopefully finding truths about humanity. Sounds good. <laughs> How's that? How was that? That was all right. <laughs> All right, thank you. Yes. Do you, do you say that scientists are very ins inspirational. Thank you for that. There it is. Did you study science? Did you come from any kind of a scientific background? Uh, I studied science when I was like 10 years old. Uh, no, but I, I got kicked out of biology class. Um, uh, but I was saying earlier, just as much as I admire scientists, I admire actors. I think uh, I like to surround myself with people who can achieve feats that I s fall back in awe and watch with awe because um, they make my life more interesting. And, uh, and I feel that way when I see Michael. I'm, I hope you guys get the opportunity to see the movie when it comes out next week. Yes, the 18th. Yeah, so yeah, here, go see it and you'll, you'll see... Uh, Michael delivers a phenomenal performance. And, uh, and so just like watching scientists and seeing what they discover, watching actors is really a great joy for me. There's, it, it's a very a complex plot, and I don't want to spoil anything for you because there's a lot of twists and turns to it, make it makes it really enjoyable. Um, but I, I believe we have a clip that really sets up the crux of the movie in a, in a way that's not spoilery. Um, Essentially, this is a movie about a, uh, an, a scientist of eyes, um, a specialist in eyes, who discovers there might be a connection um, to past lives um, through the individuality of the organ of the eye. Um, and I think without saying anything else, we should run that first clip. Ah, uh, bravo. And crazy bravo. people. The, the film, <laughs> it definitely pushes you to those kind of questions like, how can this possibly be? Can you tell us a little, tell us a little bit about, also about that, that actress in there, Britt Marling? Sure, She's yeah. She's someone that you've worked with. Britt Marling is, is one of my best friends in the world. Uh, we met uh, over a decade ago, I guess, when we were at Georgetown, uh, and we started making short films together when we were kids, basically. Uh, and my first film, 
uh, Another Earth. She was the star of that film, and 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 we continue to have a beautiful uh, collaboration, and I hope to have a collaboration with her always. Um, I, this part here of Karen, I, I wrote it for her, and and she's spectacular in the movie. She has a uh, she has a really difficult role to pull off in this film, and she she pulls off the nuances of it with such um, poise and strength. It's really spectacular. All the roles in this film are really, really uh, difficult. They're brainy and they're full of feeling. And your, your performance especially is terrific, Michael. Tell us, I mean, there's, this is also a love story in addition to being a scientific inquiry and a metaphysical film. So when you, when you get a script like this, I'm wondering what, what parts were you responding to at first? What really grabs you about this? Uh, well, the, f the first thing that I responded to was Mike Cahill, the director. You know, we met, he had this idea of this movie kind of in his head. He, he explained it to me, I guess, maybe in about 15 minutes. It was a really organic, very casual meeting. And I could tell that he had the whole movie. The whole movie was there. And it's something that he'd been thinking about, I think, for like 12, 15 years or something Ooh. crazy like that. Um, but there wasn't a script. And so I just kind of loosely said, like, you should really, you know, take some time, put some time into that idea because it's an amazing idea. Two days later, he sent me, like, a, a synopsis, you know, like a breakdown of, of, mm -hmm. of the whole film, a couple pages. And then something, cr I for you know, I forget, it was like two weeks or three weeks he sent the first draft of the, of the script. So, and then we started workshopping it and... Um, you know, making adjustments, and so I was really involved, you know, um, with, you know, um, with, with it coming into fruition, which is, which is another, like, it's amazing. Which is a lesson. huge understatement, by the way. So that, uh, if you don't mind, can I take it? When I, I, I jumped at the opportunity to meet Michael, it, we had a general meeting, and he's an artist who, had I, who, had I, who I had admired from afar for a very long time. Um, if you guys are familiar with his work, every single choice he's made for role is bold and fearless and surprising and exciting. And, and his micro choices with, within the character in scenes are bold and surprising. And, and uh, for me, I, I think he's one of the greatest actors of this generation. And I jumped like this would be amazing to just sit down and say hi. And I didn't go in necessarily with this project saying like, oh, we're going to, you know, would you be interested in this? We were just chatting and, uh, and like an hour goes by and we're just talking about life and projects and this and that and ideas and creativity. And it was really just sort of a, a really wonderful moment. And, and then I was like, I got an idea. Or uh, let me just tell you a story. And as Michael just said, he responded to it. And his response to it was as if somebody like threw a match on some lighter fluid in my brain and it was set ablaze and I thought wow like I might have the opportunity to do something with this great artist I better get busy and 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 after he received the first script um, you know that character he built that character from the ground up like he uh, did a ton of research on the eyes studied Richard Dawkins study you know Michael uh, wrote me this long uh, uh, essay about the history of Ian, what he did, what he was like when he was a kid, what he was like as a teenager, you know, uh, the first time he got glasses, you know, the first time uh, he discovered a camera, and those things became part of the, the fabric of the, the whole entire film. So he's very humble, by the way. Uh, you seem to be entrusted often with directors' very personal projects. I think about your work in The Dreamers, Bertolucci, and the, the passion that, you know, it's an excellent, oh, excellent bravo. film. Thank you. And, and just the, the commitment that you bring to a film is something that I think puts directors at ease. Although I have to ask you, there must have been, are, were, you, were you ever nervous about, about playing a, a doctor or a scientist? Uh, I, I think you're nervous with every character. You know, you're nervous, um, um, I, you're always nervous. If you're not nervous, uh, I, I don't know, I think I would, I'd be really nervous if I wasn't nervous. <laughs> well, um, Mike, Mike was very confident in, in, uh, um, in me playing the character, so that definitely helped. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely comes through, and, and 
you have a real connection with with Astrid, right? She's mm -hmm. she, she, what's the full name of that actress who in the beginning? Burgess of the, Frisbee. Burgess Frisbee. At, she's extraordinary. And yeah. actually, we have a second clip. Um, I think of the two of you connecting in a in a diner. Yeah. Can we can we play in, that second clip? In Brooklyn. Clip? Yeah, this diner. Is the La Esquina in Brooklyn, yeah. in Williamsburg. It's a real spot. Yeah. Great spot. really good stuff and there's there's this um, a, a beautiful undercurrent throughout the film as well about uh, romance and fate as well as the the metaphysical ideas uh, it reminded me a little bit of the fly David Cronenberg's fly you know there's the, that kind of romance that steers a sci-fi movie do you um, I have to just ask you a point of, of casting how did you find such extraordinary eyes you know, oh those are you, her real eyes that, was that, there eye casting that went into uh, no, actually, it's, it's funny, because when you're making a movie, there's all these, there's so much trial and error, and we, um, Astrid didn't get the part because she had the most incredible eyes. She got the part because she's an incredible talent, uh, and we were going to do an effect. We were going to try and figure out how to do an effect for the eyes if we needed to. Uh, it just so happened, she, th that, that poster right there is, those are her real eyes, um, but in terms of trial and error, we made, for example, contact lenses with very special patterns in them. But it looked so cheesy and so fake and so bad. And especially because we shot with the red cameras in 4K, it just looked ridiculous. Um, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, those, it just happened, she just happened to have those real eyes. The film is uh, shot here in New York. Um, how important to you was it to, to make it a New York story? Uh, if I'm, this is my home. This, it, it feels really natural here. There's something about New York that I really wanted to capture. There's he likes walking from his house to set. <laughs> to set. Yeah, that's really what it was about. Lazy. Yeah. You don't want to be late. <laughs> I know, exactly. I live right next to that diner. When they're like, where are we going to shoot? I was like, oh, having coffee. I was like, how about right here? <laughs> um... <laughs> You got me. Uh, it's great to work in New York. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, great I, it's lo I love making films here. Do you know? I mean, I live here. I'm a New Yorker, and um, I mean, it's just it's great to to work here. It's great to work here. The crews are great. The, our team was amazing. Uh, you know, and we wanted to capture the real feeling of New York, and the real feeling also capture the real spirit of being a PhD student living in New York. That the real sort of three dimensionality of being a young scientist who's trying to pursue discovery while living in the city. And, and so often scientists are, or PhD or young scientists are, are never really accurately captured in films. Uh, you know, they get laid, they ha have romance, they drink beers, they make jokes, they're passionate, poetic, uh, creative people. And, and that goes against sort of the stereotype of the scientist in a movie that's like sort of dry or whatever. And, uh, and so the fabric of New York and the authenticity of New York and riding the train and, and going to par a Halloween party or that sort of feeling of New York that a young scientist uh, would really live is what we wanted to capture. You definitely get at that. And uh, I think uh, another thing that the film addresses, it, it's kind of provocative, is this idea of intelligent design. And this is a, your character is somebody who is a, a debunker of intelligent design. And I, I wonder how, how, how meaningful it, it is for you to, to make a film that really addresses sort of something that's potentially inflammatory like that. These ideas of religious butting up against science and maybe there's a way for them to coexist. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that that debate can be uh, very often looked upon as a, as a war. It can also be like a, a taboo subject. What's amazing about this film is that I, I, I believe that when people watch this film, they, they will say it's, it's a very scientific film, and then they, they will also say it's a very spiritual film. And it's done in such a, um, an eloquent, eloquent way, in such a positive way, um, to, to show those two things not at war with each other. And one, you know, Mike turned me on to Richard Dawkins, who's a, uh, um, a scientist, and he, we, we kind of based the character around him. And I sort of had this idea, like, what if you could turn Dawkins? What would, what would 
what would make this guy turn, you know? And the answer probably is love, <laughs> you know? It's probably the one thing that he wouldn't be able to explain um, scientifically with data. And um, the other thing, what is the book, the Dalai Lama book? The, uh, the uh, Universe in a Single Atom. Yeah, I, I the should, Dalai I Lama's know autobiography. That. So, like, Michael I, gave me this book when we first I, met. Yeah. I gave I gave Mike this book because he he really eloquently, um, you know, plays with those two things: science, uh, science, and spirituality. And I think that I don't know. I mean, I, I I think that it's a great debate. When people watch this film, after you hear them just talking, they're either crying, you know, or they're or That's they're talking about that. That's what I remember from Sundance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, which is which is great, you know. Yeah. It's great, and the, the and it's 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 crying like it's not like crying like that's so sad, you know. It's a really positive thing, and uh, uh, that's a really difficult thing to do in film to dial that in uh, to to an audience. It's like a catharsis. It's like a real spiritual place the film goes to, and it's and its last portion. Again, we're not spoiling anything. Um, the film goes to India. And actually, there's um, it, it explodes into a completely different emotional register, um, and I think we have a taste of that that as a final clip to show you from this film, I Origins. Can we run that last clip? Dum, dum, dum. Yep. Da, da, da. It's a, da, da, da. It, it it becomes an adventure and a quest yeah. to make a connection, um, and and I I wonder just from a creative point of view, did. Did that come first for you? That idea of, of, of finding, finding someone who has that kind of unexplainable connection? Uh, I mean, there's a simple feeling that many of us have probably felt, which is when you look into a person's eyes for the first time, a complete stranger, you feel the instant recognition. And in some ways, I wanted to figure out how to explain that. You know, that's one of those ethereal, strange coincidence like, um, inexplicable feelings that we have sometimes to look into someone's eyes and, and instantly recognize them. And so that sort of was, that, that was one of the start jumping off points maybe. Uh, also, this is a story, uh, I, um, from a few years ago I was on this island in the Mediterranean and there were these Roman ruins uh, right by the sea. And along the sea, there were these rocks. And on the rocks, there were all these dinosaur footprints. And, and it's interesting, tourists are there taking photographs. And, and it's a really beautiful location. But the thing that struck me that was really interesting was the fact that that civilization had risen and fallen. And their children had played in the puddles of those dinosaur footprints. But they had never realized they were dinosaur footprints. And uh, and I was thinking, well, what is our civilization's dinosaur footprints? What's right under our noses that, that we take for granted that we don't realize the greater significance behind them? And, and so that combined with the feeling of recognizing someone or, or through their eyes, uh, put it in a bag, mixed it up, shaked it around. Yeah, it was also that photo, right? And then, the, oh yeah, so another source of inspiration was the, this great, photo uh, that Steve McCurry took for National Geographic back in 1987 of the Afghan girl. And, and it's a beautiful story. He, he was at a refugee camp and he took this photo. He met the, I, I think you guys, you know the photograph I'm talking about? It's a very famous one. Well, yeah, you've seen it. And uh, he met her for like 30 seconds, took the photograph and off she ran somewhere off. And he was back in DC and that photograph became the cover of, of the magazine and then eventually became a worldwide iconic photograph. And every day, Steve would get letters saying, you know, who, who is this girl? And he had no idea. He, he never got a chance to... I guess she didn't sign a release, actually. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so they... Uh, for 17, uh, 17 years later, he went to try and find her, um, all grown up now, and uh, scientists tried to age the photo up to imagine what she might forensically look like uh, later. Um, and you can see it, it's a little documentary online probably now, uh, but they also brought along a biometrics company uh, and they extracted an iris code from the photograph because she has those brilliant, such specific eyes. And the thing about your eyes is they form when you're in your mother's womb and they stay the same your entire life. They're an internal organ, visible from the outside. They're unique to every single one of us. Even identical twins have different iris patterns. And so 
Uh, so these biometric scientists went along with Steve and eventually, you know, several people showed up and they weren't her and they weren't her and they weren't her and then one person, Charbet Gula, uh, showed up and she had the exact same eyes and I thought, ah, imagine finding someone through their eyes. How, we could twist this into a beautiful story. I mean, that's, that's definitely a, a great significant aspect of the film, this idea that, that science and genetics connect us and I think that the movie, too, works to connect people also in different ideas and different perspectives. It's a really rich movie. I urge you all to see it. And I think this would be a good moment for us to turn it over for some questions from our audience. Hopefully we have some interesting questions from the Michaels. The beliefs in the movie, are they reflected off of your own beliefs? Uh, of spirituality and science? And science? Yeah. Uh, when you see the movie, you'll see that it, it definitely engages the questions I'm asking. Uh, there's uh, maybe this is not really spoiling anything but one of, one of the things that he's uh, as a scientist he's doing in a lab is he's modifying worms which have only two senses the sense of smell and the sense of touch this is true he's modifying so they, they can have vision they can see and he's giving them another sense uh, so before he does anything they only know the world through smell and touch. That is the world that they understand. And after he does what he does, uh, genetically, uh, they can see, sense light, they can see light. And for me, I, I find it a really interesting metaphor for how we humans uh, can't necessarily act. We have five senses, not two. Uh, but uh, one can draw from that, that six or seven or eight, senses, nine, an infinite number of senses could potentially exist, and therefore there are things that are metaphysical, beyond the physics, beyond what we can, beyond tables and chairs and microphones. Uh, and so in that manner, science and spirituality could coexist and just not interact in a way, you know, or, or, or that which we can experience of the spiritual are just the ashes of some flames on another d dimension, like only the echoes, only the pieces coming through. Uh, on a different domain, and, and, and it's heady stuff, but hopefully when you watch the movie, it's like, really, it's like hopefully fairly accessible it's and romantic. It, it, works, it works as a movie as, as well, so don't worry about it. Thanks for your question, man. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you doing? <laughs> Great, uh, I guess this is more uh, personal in the sense of uh, uh, how did you get involved in, uh, in directing, you know, how, what was your path? Uh, my path to directing? Yeah. Uh, w uh, when I was a very young boy, I uh, was fortunate enough to get a Fisher Price Pixel Vision 2000 camera, uh, which was thrilling and exciting for me. And I remember as a, as a young boy, I filmed my uh, little brother sitting in my mom's car, and then I filmed the Matchbox car, and then I filmed him sitting in the car again, and watched that down, and it looked like he was driving the car. And it's sort of a simple thing, but that was so exhilarating for me. I felt like I had discovered Jupiter or something like that. It was amazing. And, uh, and, I, and for a long time as a kid, I would experiment making little movies. And then I forgot about it and stopped and was a teenager. And it wasn't until I was in college, I think, in one week I saw three movies. I saw Soderbergh's Sex, Lies, and Videotape. Uh, Basquiat by Julian Schnabel and uh, Red by Krzysztof Kieslowski. Before that, I'd never seen any movies like that in my entire life, and I was like, whoa, mm -hmm. this is what movies can do. This is totally different from what my understanding of movies uh, was growing up. Um, it was, they, they were able to transmit emotions that were really difficult to articulate with words, and yet they did it so succinctly with images and pictures and narrative over you know, an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, and feelings that you could feel viscerally. And, and from that moment, from that week, I, I ran off to a pawn shop and bought a camera for 100 bucks, like a Super 8 camera. I was in the middle of studying economics at Georgetown. Uh, but it like reinvigorated this, or reinv it was like, it was the beginning, and, uh, and then I just taught myself how to work with a camera and editing gear, and, and just became sort of obsessed. I have not stopped since. Hello. 
Hello. Uh, How are I you? Had a, Thanks a for wonderful. coming. Thank you for coming. Uh, I had the pleasure of screening the film in Sundance. Uh, awesome. You've seen it. I have seen it. That's great. Um, Did you like it? I loved it. Oh, great. My, so my you guys should like it. You guys should see it, too. <laughs> Thank you. Um, two questions. Uh, you guys go into amazing detail in terms of the research that you did and the process and making the film. I wonder if you ever thought about uh, creating a companion piece to kind of talk about like your process, Michael, and you know your process and all the background information that you did. And then also, I found the score amazing. Can you just talk about the music? The, I'll start with the score and then you can talk about the process. Okay. Oh, or you can talk about process. I talked for a little while. You should talk. I want to hear your voice a little bit more. Okay. Uh, so, something about the process that, you know, my, my process, um, and, and I believe Mike's process, because he didn't go to film school, because he started making films by doing films, um, I, I think, you know, he was able to put together a process that I think is very um, current and very contemporary. To, to what it is to make a film now. And um, when we were workshopping the script and designing the character, and why he, he was thinking about the shots and, and how he wanted to shoot it, you know, we were doing all those things at the same time. And, and um, nowadays, you can shoot your film, uh, you know, pretty much anywhere you can edit your film anywhere because of technology. It's it's, it's funny because we're in the Mac store, yeah. but um, All the gear is like right here. The gear has changed the business. It's changed the music industry. It's gonna. It's changing the film industry. And what's amazing about Mike is that he 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 recognizes that. And for me, uh, being an actor who's worked with many many different directors, very often you you meet. You meet directors who uh, are trying to how trying to do it how they they taught it in film school, and it's usually kind of old school methods, and it's it's not contemporary. It's not uh, the way that you know I would say that you that you that you make a film nowadays. So we very often we had two cameras running all the time. It, it wasn't uncommon for us to have like a twenty minute take. Um, uh, we did a we did camera tests that some of those camera tests are images in the movie. Uh, I mean, Mike edited the film, which which uh, is another thing for for an actor having a director that understands the camera. It wasn't it wasn't that uncommon for him to grab the camera and start shooting it. But um, it w it was a great feeling for me because. You know, I could I could sort of feel when he was getting excited. You know, um, so I don't know. I mean, that's that's some of the uh, some of the process that I think is unique to I Origins, to how we made I Origins. Absolutely, and and read the score. The score is written by uh, Will Bates and Phil Mossman. They also did the score for uh, Another Earth, also, um, and. Um, they have a studio in Brooklyn, really close to my house again. <laughs> uh, and um, I don't know, you know, it's one of those things that's hard to articulate, but when you find artists that you, you're in sync with, where, you know, for example, there's a whole palette of instruments one can use. And these guys are drawn to these strange instruments. There's one instrument that it's like a water... It looked like a medieval bong kind of thing with like spikes on it, and then they would play it and make this wonderful sound. And there are certain other instruments for that, for some reason, I don't know, don't jive with me in the right way. Like there's something that like it doesn't feel right, and I don't know what that is. I'm not musical in the sense that I could articulate that, but they and I get each other. We're very much in sync. Um, and. You know the score is the score is really wonderful. It comes out July fifteenth. The soundtrack, and you should download it. Radiohead. Oh, and Radiohead. That's right. Yeah, there's a beautiful there's um, 
two songs by Radiohead on the album, which was really, really amazing. It's amazing that they let us uh, use they, their song because it's yeah. not very common for Radiohead. And yeah, it was really cool. They gave, I mean, they they gave us those songs, which was really, really kind. And uh, and the Do. There's another track by the Do. The track list is sort of out there. Um, it's definitely something to listen to in your car. Oh, this is New York. No one has cars. <laughs> To listen, listen to it on the subway. On the subway, on the iPad. Those Don't get iPod. hit by a car. Yeah. We're in the app store. <laughs> those, those, those are great questions. I, I think we have time for, for, one, for another question. Hi, thanks for coming. Hi. Um, I was wondering what made you choose India to film. Um, it's a beautiful country, but of course it's so different from New York in that like, New York is cities and big um, buildings and everything, but India was so... I was just watching this one scene, it was so like inherently different. I just wondered what made you choose it. Sure, that's a great question. The question is why we chose the film in India. So uh, it's no we secret. We just wanted to go there. Yeah. So like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Vacation. Uh, we are like. You know, when you like, are you know, writing, if we write you it, you it in the decide. script, we'll have to end up there. <laughs> no, um, that's not true. That's not true. In, in terms of the narrative, I mean, it's, in every joke, there's uh, half truth. Um, but in addition to that, uh, narratively speaking, the film so the third act takes place in India and the film is about eyes and the meeting place between spirituality and science and, and romance. Uh, the thing about India that's really wonderful and fascinating, one thing or two things that are really particular to our story. One, um, the belief in the transmigration of souls is sort of fundamental. It's like the ground that one walks on there culturally. Two, uh, India has the largest uh, program, uh, ID program, scanning its citizens' eyes, literally. So every day, another million, there's, there's a billion, 1.2 billion people in India, I think. And, uh, and they have this national program uh, to create IDs based on the eyes. Uh, and it's a wonderful program. It's actually really, uh, it helps facilitate uh, people to get um, bank account, open bank accounts, it facilitates voting, and it's really just a, it's a really useful ID system that was invented in the 80s that, uh, that, you know, you don't need a card because you never forget your eyeball, basically, is the thinking. <laughs> and like that, that sort of technology you see in Minority Report, that's actually real technology that exists today. There's this wonderful company called iLock uh, that, was, that was a great consultant for us in the film, and we use their devices within the film. Uh, and so for our film, the purposes of our film, that scientific iris biometrics meeting the sort of spiritual fundamental belief system um, was, was just the perfect canvas to tell the, the, the climax of this story. Thanks for that question. And it's beautiful there. Thank you so much for making this movie. I can't wait to see it. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And I actually have like three questions in one. That's all right. We'll answer all three. <laughs> so the first one is, um, where does the name of the wh what inspired the name of the movie? Sure. The second one is, how, what is what inspired that whole narrative of why this storyline and what is there anything in particular that you hope to get across to the viewer? And what is your spiritual path? <laughs> uh, um, the the title of the movie I'm I. It's sort of an obscure seeming title, but actually I'm very literal when it comes to titles. Like, Another Earth is about another Earth. Uh, I made a documentary a long time ago called Boxers and Ballerinas, and it was about boxers and ballerinas. Uh, and this is I Origins, and this is about the origin of the self, really. Like, where is the, the, that entity that which we call I? Um, you know, where does that come from? Uh, the second question was, where did the narrative come from? Uh, I, I wanted to tell a story about different types of love. And so it, all this science stuff aside, all the spiritual stuff aside for a moment, really the story is just uh, about a man and two different types of loves that he experiences that are vastly different from one another. Uh, one is sort of a youthful, passionate, firework exploding uh, type of love, and the other one's almost like a mountain that's uh, strong and, f and, and um, will last for centuries, perhaps, and, and, and explore the sort of different nuances of those types of relationships that are both equally valid and beautiful. 
Um, third question was spiritual path. Was that directed at Michael? <laughs> uh, so, uh, um, it's personal. That's why it's such, so, uh, a, such a personal my, uh, thing. My <laughs> spiritual path is. Uh, what is she talking about? Uh, I wouldn't be. I. I. Well, in keeping with the theme of this movie, sort of, um, you know, science and spirituality. Uh, I realized something when I watched this film. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if. You know, if a UFO came through the Mac store, landed, and like green men came out and said, like, we're taking everything over, I don't think I would be surprised. Uh, I'd be very excited. I'd be scared. I'd run, probably. <laughs> but uh, I don't think I'd be surprised by that. In the same right, I wouldn't be surprised if my grandfather, who passed away, uh, you know, came flying through the Mac store and said, <laughs> <laughs> So um, I don't know if that gives you an idea of where I, where I land. And if you figure it out, please let me know. <laughs> but love is important. Love is important. Um, I believe in love. I believe in, in, in seeing great movies day after day ah, and week bravo. after week. And this is definitely one of them. It, I Origins is the film. It opens on Friday the 18th. You can see it at Landmark Sunshine and other places here. And when you do, please tweet about it. Uh, tell Please your friends. tweet about it. Even tweet about this moment. Let's let's thank our guests. And we will repeat. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks, you guys.